Good morning, everyone. This is Luke 21, 25 through 36. There will be signs in the sun, the moon and the stars, and on earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, stand up, raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you will know that the kingdom of God is close. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with the dissipation and drunkenness of the worries of this life, and that that day does not catch you unexpectedly, like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and stand before the Son of Man. Welcome to the first Sunday of Advent. As promised, we are off to a rousing start with Luke's mini-apocalyptic vision of the already and the not yet. The themes your worship team have chosen for you this season center around the idea of home. So in the coming weeks, we'll journey through different metaphors of home, creating home, finding home, building home, and Christmas Eve will arrive at a welcome home to the retelling of the birth story of Jesus. This week's topic is homesickness. I think of nostalgia as a kind of homesickness, a longing for memories of what was or what never was. But homesickness isn't always about the past. It can also be about the future, the loss of what isn't or what will never be. The truth is that our expectations of what could be are forever being betrayed by our realities. A holiday parade turned tragic in Kenosha, Wisconsin, leaving 40 injured and five dead. The heartache of a Thanksgiving spent alone while others celebrated with friends, a diagnosis, a death, an estrangement. Homesickness stirs in us a longing for a time when things were or might have been less complicated than the realities in which we live. We are always floating somewhere between the already and the not yet. This passage from Luke heralds the coming of the Son of Man, calling listeners to have eyes to see the signs and the good sense to be ready. Jesus tells the disciples that there are signs that indicate the arrival, the advent, the presence and power of the kingdom of God, like leaves on a tree. Such signs show us the nearness of God. If we are alert and raise our heads, meaning open our minds to God's presence, Luke calls us to cultivate the awareness of God. Practice our spirit sightings. Pay exquisite attention to what is emerging and notice the connections between seemingly disparate things. At the center of the reading from Luke this week is a parable of the fig tree. And it's not normally what we think of when we think of a para parable. There's not really a story per se, which is what we usually expect. No little old lady searching for coins, no sons, no servants or stewards. This parable presents more of an observation, more of a warning. Time to pay exquisite attention to what is at hand and have the patience have the patience to wait for it as it becomes what it is becoming. 
Now I have a fig tree in my front yard and I have a deep love for this fig tree. I love observing it at every turn of the season from fat purple ripe ripeness and bright green leaves stripped down to the white barrenness of winter bark. The fig tree is no less a fig tree when it's not bearing fruit. The fig tree is a fig tree in every season, but the fullness of what it can become requires patience and a lot of fertilizer administered with admiration and endearment. The Greek philosopher said that no great thing is created suddenly any more than a bunch of grapes or a fig. If you tell me that you desire a fig, I answer you that there must be time. Let it first blossom, then bear fruit, then ripen. The kingdom of God, the people of God are like that fig tree, no less beautiful or worthy of compassion and care when dormant than when dripping with fruit. The central promise of the parable of the fig tree is that God is close. The poet David White puts it this way, close. It's what we almost always are, close to happiness, close to another, close to leaving, close to tears, close to God, close to losing faith, close to being done, close to saying something, close to success, and even with the greatest sense of satisfaction, close to giving the whole thing up. Our human essence lies not in arrival, but in being almost there. We are creatures who are on the way, our journey a series of impending anticipated arrivals. Human beings do not find their essence through fulfillment or eventual arrival, but by staying close. We are in effect always close, always close to the ultimate secret that we are more real in our simple wish to find a path than any destination we could ever reach. The step between not understanding that and understanding that is as close as we get to happiness. The Greek word for coming near is engenzo. It is a verb that expresses immensity, the immensity of coming close. There's a homesickness we all carry in our hearts for a oneness with God. We have a friend who says she loves to spend time with little babies because they, they've just come from the source and they still remember the oneness. Throughout our lives, we long for that closeness, that oneness with God. The psalmists say, as a deer pants for water, we long for that oneness. We search for it and discover it. We catch glimpses of it like the stars at night. It fades, but it's never far away. Just like the stars at night, they're still there, even when it's light. Maybe it needs to get dark to be able to see them. The homesickness for God is what inspires us to pursue the spiritual disciplines of our faith, meditation and prayer, almsgiving and service to the vulnerable, all of which we do because we seek closeness with God. We're desperate to connect with what is good in this broken and beautiful and hurting world. Beloved, Luke's message as we enter Advent is that the kingdom of God is not far off. It's not an undiscoverable land. It's as close as our waking will allow. The kingdom of God was made known in the birth and life and death of Jesus in the resurrection of Jesus that we'll celebrate in the season of Lent. It hems us in before and behind, but we must be mindful, lest our hearts become weighed down by the worries of this life. So raise up your heads, people of God. The poet Rumi says the breezes at dawn have secrets to tell. Don't go back to sleep. Amen. Oh,